Here at PAX East 2019, virtual reality seems to be front and center. There are a whole lot of VR games. Behind me is Starship Commander. Um, it's a very interesting VR game that aims to be a bit like a Hollywood story. How this one will pan out? Well, we have yet to find out. But from the looks of things, folks are enjoying it a whole lot. Good sir, could you tell us your name and your role on the game? Hi, I'm Alexander Mejia, creative director at, on Starship Commander. I am at this company that I started called Human Interact three years ago with a mission to create storytelling games and virtual reality that made the most sense for the medium. Very nice. So now when you say makes the most sense for the medium, so you mean we're, you're not just adapting traditional games? Correct. So I think the market has finally realized that if you adapt just any old game into virtual reality, it doesn't quite make the most sense, right? Like when you took Team Fortress 2 and you put it in there, people were like, oh god, I'm moving way too fast. What is going on? This is crazy. And people were getting really sick. And the reality is that in virtual reality, <laughs> see what I did there? Seated experiences are actually dominating the market right now because more than 48% of the audience can only do seated or standing. And I don't know about you, but at the end of the day, I don't want to be waving my arms around like a ninja, slicing things. Even though it's cool, even though those games are cool, try those games, they're really awesome. But I'm thinking about the types of games that people come back to every day and say, hey, this is what I'm going to do most of the time, and not just on a Friday night when I want to get like really juiced up. <laughs> like when you have, like, I mean, as a huge fan of Dance Central, you know, I tried the um, new Space Channel 5 VR game. That was a lot of fun, you know, but like, it, there, it's a different sort of game when you want to relax versus when you're ready to, you know, up and move it. So nice. So I have to ask, what inspired Starship Commander? So what we wanted to do was create a game that you could have a conversation with a person. So when we first tried VR, it was like this life-changing experience. Everybody has it. And it's like, you got to try it if you haven't done it. Because you put the headset on, you're like, oh, there's no way this could be good. There's no way. And then, oh my god, I'm in a different place. And that's called Presence. And so I believed that I was in a roller coaster five years ago when I logically knew my brain, You're safe. I'm totally sitting still in an office. And so we came up with the idea, what if we put a person in front of you? Would you attempt to talk to them? And that's where the idea from Starship Commander was born. Now, the name, it, it kind of makes me think of Wing Commander. Does it have any Wing Commander DNA in there? Well, I'm not going to say that it does or doesn't, but I will say that as a child, I played Wing Commanders 1, 2, 3, 4, very much. And um, the idea of being on this military ship was always really appealing to me. But Wing Commander also has a lot of baggage from like the early 90s that you don't necessarily want to bring forward. And it was okay at that time, but now... Virtual reality as a medium requires different thought processes. You know, what works in a book is not the same as what works in a movie. And it's not the same as what works in a game. And it's not the same as what works in virtual reality. So what we've built is a ability for, to make you the main character of the story. So instead of watching some guy on the screen being like, oh, I wouldn't do that, I wouldn't do that, I wouldn't do that, you get to do it. And not only do you get to do it, but you get to say it in the way that you want to do it. So I know for a lot of people, they want to play it really serious. They want to be the commander. Okay, do this, take off the missiles, do that. And for me, I want to play it kind of like a comedy where it's like, oh yeah, that, yeah let's, just, let's just go on with that. Okay. Oh no, they're attacking us. What should we do? And so you've seen a lot of success with that in shows like The Orville. On, on TV right now, where people are calling it like, this is a better Star Trek than Star Trek. Their words, not mine, right? And so everybody has this concept of what's good and what's bad. And virtual reality strength allows you to unlock that for yourself instead of some director sitting in a chair in Hollywood writing what he thinks is the best. Very nice. So now let's say that folks want to try this. Where can they play? So Starship Commander Arcade is in virtual reality arcades right now. You can search for VR arcades near me and call them up and ask them if they have it. You can also go to our Twitter page, which is at human underscore interact. And you can take a look. It's the first post up there. You can find the map of the confirmed locations we have. Now, 
Just because it's not a confirmed location doesn't mean they don't have the game. Okay, so now there's another thing I have to ask. I ask this of everybody. What is your favorite game of all time? Go. Quake. Very nice. 1996, Quake. We actually play it every year on our stream. During it, and then next to that would probably be Doom. 1990, 1994's Doom. So we play that every December because that's when the game came out. And then we play it in uh, June. That's when Quake came out. Every year. So like six months, Quake 1, it's free to download. It runs on everything. I don't care how bad your computer is. You can play it. And then same thing with Doom. We play that. Yeah, it runs on a cal it runs on a calculator, dude. Your phone has more power than that. The laptop you got has more power than that. So, if you like Quake or Doom, join us every year on our Human Interact stream. Have you ever done Quake Live? Yes, um, I actually have a video about uh, Quake Live. Or sorry, Quake Champions. Um, Quake Live came and went. It was basically a remake of Quake Three. But um, honestly, I played them all. But there's something about the original Quake that really grabs me even to this day that uh, like Quake 2 and Quake 3 don't, don't do. Uh, you know, in a lot of ways, Quake 3 is a little bit of a faster game really? than the original Quake. But the, 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 the overbalance of the rocket launcher and the lightning gun and having those weapons assigned uh, along with like having to search the map in a competitive sense w is way more exciting to me than what they've done to essentially balance the game. Yeah. So let's say that folks want to find out more about Starship Commander. Where can they go? They can go to our Twitter page, at human underscore interact, and they can find out there. Or they can search online for Starship Commander, search for VR arcades near you to find an arcade near you so you can actually experience it, unless you've got a VR headset, which we will be announcing at a later date when it is coming to Steam. Very nice. Well, I'm looking forward to this one, sir. It's been a pleasure chatting with you. I hope you enjoy your packs. Thank you very much. That's awesome.